organs of the body function almost continuously to maintain the well-being of individual. The human species could not survive without male and female reproductive systems. The reproductive systems play a central role in development of structural and functional differences between male and female. For both male and female reproductive systems, it exhibits striking differences, but on the other hand, they also have a number of similarities. So, the reproductive system has its so-called gonads, wherein um, it is called testes for male and ovaries for female. The gonads produce sex cells or gametes, and it is also responsible for the secretion of sex hormones. Um, ova or eggs is for male gametes, while sperms are. Sorry, I mean ova or eggs is for female gametes and sperm is for male gametes. Meanwhile, the remaining reproductive systems structures are called accessory reproductive organs. So, let's take a look at the anatomy of the male reproductive system. The primary sex organs of the male reproductive system, we have the testis. And this is the structure of the testis or male gonads, which have both an exo exocrine or sperm producing function and an endocrine or testosterone producing function. So we have the coverings of testis. First is tunica albuginia here. This, this one is the tunica albu albuginia and the Second is septum or septa here. The extensions of the capsule that extend into the testis and divide it into lobules. This one. Each lobule contains one to four seminiferous tubules that are tightly coiled structures and it functions as sperm forming factories. Then it carries sperm into the reti testis, which is located here. So the sperms that enter into reti testis goes to the epididymis. Next to be discussed are the accessory organs forming the male duct system which transports sperm from the body. First is the epididymis. The epididymis is first part of the male duct system, which functions to mature in store sperm cells for at least 20 days. When a male is sexually stimulated, the walls of the epididymis contract to expel the sperm into the next part of the duct system, the ductus or which is the ductus deferens. Vas deferens runs upward from the epididymis through the inguinal canal into the pelvic cavity and arcs over the superior aspect of the urinary bladder. From epididymis. The main function of this is to propel live sperm from their start sites to the urethra, which is here. The last organ for the male duct system is the urethra, which extends from the base of the urinary bladder to the tip of the penis. And it has three named regions. First is the prostatic urethra. Prostatic urethra. Below the urinary bladder. Here. 
which is surrounded by the prostate gland. Second is the membra membranous urethra. Here, membranous urethra spanning the distance from the prostatic urethra to the penis. And lastly, is the spongy penile urethra. Here. Running within the length of the penis. Since the accessory reproductive organs of male were tackled, we'll move on to the male's accessory organ, accessory glands, I mean, and semen. This includes three glands, namely seminal vesicles. Here. Second is single prostate gland. Single prostate gland. Third is the bulbo urethral gland. These glands produce the bulk of semen. The sperm containing fluid that is propelled out of the male's reproductive tract during ejaculation. So the seminal vesicles is located at the base of the bladder that produce about 60% of the fluid volume of semen. Their thick yellowish secretion is rich in sugar, vitamin C, prostaglandins, and other substances which nourish and activate the sperm passing through the tract. The duct of each seminal vesicle joins that of the ductus deferens on the same side to form the ejaculatory duct. And so the sperm and seminal fluid enter the urethra together during ejaculation. The prostate gland is a single gland about the size of the chestnut, which is part of the urethra just below the urinary bladder. Prostate gland secretion is a milky fluid that plays a role in activating sperm. During ejaculation, it enters the urethra through several small ducts since the prostate is located immediately anterior to the rectum. Anterior to the rectum. Bulbar urethral glands are tiny, pea-sized glands inferior to the prostate gland. They produce a thick, clear mucus that drains into the penile urethra This secretion is the first to pass down the urethra when a man becomes sexually excited. It is believed to cleanse the urethra of traces of acidic urine and it serves as a lubricant during sexual intercourse. So, let's talk about semen. Semen is a milky, white, sticky mixture of sperm and accessory gland secretions. The li liquid I mean, the liquid provides a transport medium and nutrients and contains chemicals that protect the sperm and aid their movement. The external genitalia of the male include the scrotum, is a divided sac of skin that hangs outside the abdominal cavity between the legs and at the root of the penis. Meanwhile, the penis is designed to deliver the sperm into the male reproductive tract. The skin-covered penis consists of shaft, which ends in an enlarged tip, the glands penis. The skin covering the, the penis is loose and it folds downward to form a calf of skin, the prepus, or for skin. That the anatomy of the 
real reproductive systems was explained, let's know about how the systems and organs function. The chief role of the male in the reproductive process and the produced sperm and the hormone testosterone. So the first reproductive process is called the spermatogenesis or the sperm production. So um, this is the male reproductive organ and this is the structure of the testis and this one is what we call um, seminiferous tubule and this seminiferous tubule um, this is where the formation of sperms occurs so this So this one, seminiferous tubule. So in the seminiferous tubule, as what she mentioned just now, so this is where the sperm formation occurs. So let's take a closer look at this seminiferous tubule. So just imagine that this is the microscopic anatomy of what is inside the seminiferous tubule. So take a look at this um, diagram. So here, it is the seminiferous tubule or each lobules of the seminiferous tubule. So at the edge or the outer edge of each tubule lies the so-called spermatogonia or the stem cell. The spermatogonia, spermatogonia or the stem cells stem cell so here in the spermatogonia um, um, each division produces two um, type of daughter cells so the first one is the type A daughter cells type A daughter cells So let's say this is the type A and this is the, I mean, this is the type A daughter cells and the other one is the type B daughter cells. So the first daughter cells, which is the type A, remains at the basement membrane or remains at the tubule per periphery so that it will have the capability to maintain the stem the stem cell population but meanwhile the other daughter cells which is the type b daughter cell is being um, propelled or pushed downward to the tubule lumen take note the tubule lumen so this type b daughter cells that was being pushed downward to the tubule lumen becomes a prime Mari spermato spermatocytes. So this is the first stage during the meiosis. So these spermatocytes um, is destined to undergo three process called the meiosis. So what what is meiosis? So meiosis is a special type of nuclear division so it can be divide it can be classified into meiosis 1 and the other one is the meiosis 2 so the primary spermatocytes here so in this stage we will undergo the process of meiosis so these primary spermatocytes will um, have its division which will produce the secondary spermatocytes. So this is if this is the primary spermatocytes, then this is the secondary spermatocytes. 
So these secondary spermatocytes um, will um, undergo again for a uh, division, which um, um, so here's the unique thing about meiosis. So in meiosis, you um, in meiosis, um, it does not only produce two gametes, but instead it can produce one, two, three, four, four daughter cells. Or moreover, the so-called gametes. So these gametes are called spermatids. Spermatids. So um, information for this, um, just to add up, spermatids um, they cannot fertilize egg. Why? Because spermatids, um, I mean, spermatids are still um, non motile cells. And these spermatids here should undergo a process called the spermiogenesis. Because um, since these spermatids cannot fertilize an egg, since they have the so called excess baggage of cytoplasm, so it will not function well during reproduction. So these spermatids, the the, the excess cytoplasm inside this spermatid should be slap, I mean stripped away or stripped off for it to become a mature sperm. So this should undergo a spermiogenesis or the process of stripping off the excess baggage inside these spermatids. So once it became mature, or these spermatids became um, become a mature sperm, it will only have three main regions, which will be tackled by Rose Girante. Okay, when so the cytoplasm uh, slough off, what remains is compact compacted um, three regions, which is the um, sperm head, meat piece, and the tail. The sperm head contains the, okay, this one is the um, sperm head. And this sperm head contains um, DNA or genetic material. So it is, um, the nucleus of the spermatid. So the the uh, anterior nucleus is the helmet-like um, acrosome. So this one is the acrosome, which is um, similar to large lysosome. So when the sperm um, gets, um, when the sperm close into uh, contact of the egg, the acrosomal membrane um, breaks down and releases an enzy enzymes that helps um, the sperm penetrates through the um, follicle cell around the egg. The filaments which form the tails rise from the centrioles in the main piece. So this is um, our this is the mid the location of the mid, mid piece here. The mitochondria wrap around these filaments. This one. The mitochondria wrap these filaments and provide ATP which is needed for the tail to propel sperms. When the sperm is unable to swim, it is moved by the peristalsis to the epididymis and undergoes maturation, which increases the motility and fertilizing power. So as what I, I have 
discussed earlier, so um, the follicle stimulating hormone was the hormone responsible for the um, for prodding the seminiferous tubules to produce sperms. So for the testosterone production, um, another hormone is responsible for um, activating um, um, the production of the testosterone. And this is um, being activated by the luteinizing hormone or the interstitial cell stimulating hormone, which is um, also secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. And then from this time on, um, uh, this tes testosterone is, I mean, testosterone is produced continuously for the rest of man's life. The rising blood level of testosterone in the young male stimulates the adolescent growth spark, prods his reproductive organs to develop their adult size, underlies the sex drive, and causes the secondary male sex characteristics to appear. Secondary sex characteristics typical of males includes deepening of the voice due to enlargement of the larynx, increased hair growth all over the body, and particularly in the axillary and pubic regions, and the face or the beard and mustache. Enlargement of skeletal muscles to produce behavior muscle mass typical of the male physique. Increased heaviness of the skeleton due to thickening of the bones. So those were the uh, main function of the male reproductive system. First is to produce sperm and the other one is to produce testosterone. Yes. Thank you.